Hey guys, in this video, going to be going over one of the most prevalent Gen 2 competitive Pokemon that you'll see in a competitive team, and that is Cloyster. Going to be going over these moves and how you can access them. Cloyster is a water ice type, and this is going to leave it strongly resisting ice, resisting water, and then weak to electric fighting grass and rock. In terms of its stats, its defense is off the charts all the way up there at 180. Very impressive. Also a nice attack at 95, special attack at 85, speed at 70, HP at 50, and special defense at 45. And it's really nice having a Pokemon in your competitive team that knows the move spikes. It hurts grounded foes on switch and Given a competitive battle, you're often going to see a lot of switch-ins to try to get more favorable matchups. But also, you can often see moves such as Roar and Whirlwind, which are going to force out your opponent. And when you force them to switch, spikes will also deal damage in those instances as well. And we can see that Cloyster learns spikes through leveling up, picking that one up at level 33. Move number two, we have a same type attack bonus that we get from Surf. It's 95 power, 100 accurate. And this one's pretty straightforward. Cloyster is going to learn this one through HM03. Move number three, you can either go Toxic or Hidden Power Electric. With Toxic, it badly poisons the target. It's 85% accurate. And it has a good synergy with Spikes because Spikes is doing chip damage. And if you poison your opposition, that'll continue to do chip damage as well throughout the battle. Or you could also slot in Hidden Power Electric. This would be a super effective attack that you could use against an enemy Cloyster, for instance. But there's also many other things in the Gen 2 competitive meta that Electric is going to do super effective damage to. We'll start off with Toxic. This is going to be TM06. And TM06 Toxic can be picked up as a prize for defeating the gym leader Janine. Whereas Hidden Power would be TM10, found over on the third floor of the Celadon department store for 3,000. And it can be very difficult getting the appropriate typing on your Hidden Power. And if you're interested in how the typing on Hidden Power is calculated, I'll have this article linked down in the description that walks you through the process on how this is calculated in the Gen 2 games. And move number four, we have Explosion and Rapid Spin. Explosion being that last ditch effort type attack, if you can see that you're about to faint. Using something like an Explosion so that you faint but deal out a ton of damage in the process can be a great option. So with Explosion, the target's defense is halved during damage. It's 250 power, 100 accuracy. So we can see that Explosion would have to be learned from a prior generation. So your Cloyster would have to be in the Gen 1 Pokemon games. You teach it TM47, which is Explosion, and you can pick up that TM on the third floor of Victory Road in the northwest area of the third floor. And I also like the option of potentially going Rapid Spin because it can allow you to eliminate spikes that are on your side of the playing field. It only does a little bit of damage at 20 power. It is 100 accurate. But you're kind of killing two birds with one stone if you have spikes as well as Rapid Spin on just one Pokemon. Where you can dish out that spikes over to your enemy's side of the field. But Rapid Spin would allow you to eliminate spikes on your side of the field. It's kind of a nice combo to have. And Rapid Spin would have to be learned through an egg move if you wanted to slot that one in. And going over to our Gen 2 breeding guide for Cloyster, we can see that Rapid Spin would have to be learned through chain breeding. So you'd have to get that Rapid Spin onto the Kabuto line. And the Kabuto line would learn Rapid Spin from the Squirtle line. So you'd have to get that Rapid Spin on Squirtle, pass it down to the Kabuto, who would then pass it down eventually to your Cloyster. And that rounds out this build with the item we have leftovers at the end of every turn. The holder restores 1 16th of its max HP. And leftovers can be picked up from a Wild Snorlax from a trash bin in the Celadon City restaurant or by trading Wild Clefable or Wild Snorlax from the first gen Pokemon games over to the gen 2 games. And that's going to finish this one off. So I appreciate you guys stopping by. Consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and I'll catch you back here next time.